Wow, we need sunglasses today. It's so sunny. Beautiful day to go to the reindeer farm. And it's so fall. Like, look at all the yellow leaves and red fireweed <laughs> leaves. And look at. I don't. Snow. I see it. <laughs> There's snow coming down the mountain. Yuck. I'm with the geese. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> so, what are we doing at Denise's today? We have so much to do. She has some really naughty, ruddy bucks. So, you know, mm. fall's here, rut is here. Mm. So, all those male reindeer are scrapping and fighting and getting wire wrapped around like they're destroying the fence at one part. Jeez. Yeah, today is a day of rut control. The bulls this time of year are a hot mess. Their hormones are basically running everything. They're completely running the show. The male hysteria is getting out of control. <laughs> yeah. So for Lauren and Denise trying to keep some organized chaos here, it's difficult. Let's go. There's my favorite reindeer farmers. <laughs> Hello. Hey. So hey. nice to see you guys. Welcome out. Thank you. <laughs> How have you guys been? Good. So you've got a lot for us to do today, I heard. Yeah, so it's rut season. Our bulls are really kind of causing havoc around here. Yes. That's been an everyday extravaganza. I think the biggest problem is this bull at the moment. Yeah, OK. This one bull ripped a hole in the fence, and the rest of the herd got into a pasture where we didn't want them to be. Oh, dang. And so we need to try to get them back into their pen. But right, he's right. Okay. working against us. Bulls will be bulls? Yep. <laughs> My fences can't take a whole lot more. <laughs> it's been pretty rough. <laughs> he needs to chillax. Yeah, and what else did we have? One of our babies, she mm -hmm. got her eye injured. But we can help with all of that. All right, I'll let's say. do it. During this time of year, we tend to have some injuries because of rut. So these are the babies, huh? Yeah. They'll injure themselves. They'll injure each other all the time. Just yesterday, it looks like she tore her bottom eyelid Ooh, open. OK. Well, that's nice and fresh. And so we're hoping that it's something that maybe Dr. Oakley can just throw a stitch in there and fix. Kind of knit shut yeah, there. Yeah, hopefully okay. something with just a stitch or two. OK, let's get in the pen. All right. Okay, babies. Yeah, we're basically just trying to weed out the ones that we're going to work on. So this one we don't want to let out. Oh, oh, oh. All right. I wouldn't let anyone out until we're done getting the one we want. Come on, baby. Oh, no. Pew, pew. Oh, boy. These babies are only four months old, but unfortunately, even the babies go into rut. So we call it the baby rut. It's a lot less intense than the adult males. There, stop. Those two. OK. But they're still way more amped up and aggressive than the females are. So then when they're ready, we're just going to sort this one. one that we want. Ow. We've been trying to get the babies down the chute so we can work on them. And one of them just jumps right on top of Lauren. Looks like he's punching at her. Stop, buddy. This guy is a total pain in the neck. Go out the gate. Get, let him out the gate. There you go. He's being an idiot. <laughs> Are you OK? Are you sure you're OK? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. It's a rodeo. Rodeo, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It's a rodeo. Luckily, she's a champ. She'll handle it just fine. So I'm Eric Waite. I am married to Lauren Waite. Her family owns the reindeer farm out here. It can get really wild out there. I had my poor wife back there get stabbed or jumped on before, just all sorts of stuff. It's a good time. One of the trickiest parts about it is oh, no. I want to be able to watch her back and make sure that doesn't happen. <laughs> kind of rowdy over there, yeah? Yeah, you took that like a champ. Muddy. <laughs> but it's so great being able to work with someone that I, I not only love and, and admire, but also trust will be able to handle whatever it is back there, whatever craziness is happening. I was braced for it. I knew when he jumped up, I was like, he's going to jump on me. I'm ready. Are you ready? Here she comes. All the way through, girly. This little baby doesn't have a name yet. Good girl. Her personality is really sweet, and I love her colors. They're really pretty. She's nice and calm. She's a sweetie. But at this point, she can't close her eye all the way because her eyelid is ripped open. Oh, poor girl. Ooh, ow. So as she's looking at me, I can see that the eyelid has been ripped right down. I mean, there's basically no lower eyelid for about half the way. It's pretty gnarly. Oh, it's all pussy. Aw, poor miss. So it got torn right from the middle, and it's hanging down in a flap. You know, like right now, she has no intact eyelid. So if we didn't repair this, 
she can't blink all the way? Well, she'll probably get lots of little infections, so it would be much better if I can get that to reattach, because you can see how much nicer it's going to hold in mm -hmm. tears. Ugh. We have eyelids for a reason. I mean, the eyelashes help protect your eyes from sun, but they also help keep debris out. And with how much wind we get out here all uh, year yeah, round. Yeah, that's right. If you don't have the eyelids to close and lubricate the eye, that eye will get a lot of irritation and have chronic ulcers and problems. What I'm going to need to do is reconstruct that eyelid. I mean, that has to go back where it came from. A little bit of plastic surgery, huh? Yeah. So first thing, sedation. She can't be moving her head around while I'm trying to suture her eyelid, obviously. OK, miss. All right, inject in. During the summer, the reindeer grow their antlers in velvet. Yeah, I think we're good. You guys want to help move her real quick? And now, at the end of summer, they have just those exposed bone antlers. With their antlers being hard, they can poke them, they can bonk them on each other on their antlers, on the fencing. There we go. Good girl. Good girl. Eye injuries are hazard of having antlers on your head, I think. OK, so what I'm going to do here is, first of all, do a little local, because I'm going to start kind of scraping and cutting away. Just a little smidge to take the edge off. Um, and then if you want to put a drop fluorescein in there, we can see if it comes out her nose. Go ahead and put a drip in there. So the fluorescein stain is a way for me to look at the surface of the cornea to make sure it's smooth and there's not ulcers. I want to make sure that when she ripped this eyelid, she didn't actually poke her eye somewhere that we haven't noticed. And the eyeball itself looks great. No stain stuck anywhere that I see. The stain is also a way for me to make sure that the tear duct is patent, meaning that the tear duct in the tube that takes tears from the corner of the eye into the inside of the nose to drain is actually a tube that's working. Her tear duct may be damaged. And it might take a while to drain in there. We're going to give this stain a few minutes to work its way down to her nostril. In the meantime, we're going to get started on the surgery. OK. Does this one got a name? She doesn't, but we can name Aww. her. <laughs> How about Splitty? Um, eye. Splitty. Has something to do with eye. eyes. Typically, the baby reindeer here don't get names until either the farmers get to know them a bit better or something happens and they need medical care. And then it's kind of game on, and we get to have fun with naming. Isla. <laughs> How about Isla? Isla's cute, spelled E. Y-E-Y-E. -E. E -E. <laughs> Isla. Getting a name is a little like getting a lollipop after going to a doctor's visit. Rip your eyelid open and get a cute name. Nice. OK, Isla. I need you to bleed. So right at the edges of that flap of skin, I'm trying to freshen it up, which means I'm cutting away some of the dead tissue. Both the flap that's hanging in there and the skin that's waiting need to have freshened edges. So when you put them together, they actually will be able to have cells grow in and hold it tight. Come on, you. Show me some blood. Blood means it's going to bring all the oxygen and the nutrients to feed those tissues as they're growing. So I try to suture something together that has no blood supply. It's doomed to fail. Yay, we have bleeding. That's so good. And now I'm just going to go up and kind of zip the skin together. Just got to line that up. Just kind of eyeball it. Huh. <laughs> I see what you did there. Ah, you see. <laughs> got jokes for days. I'm a dad. They're all dad jokes. What do you want? We got this, Eric. <laughs> put you two back together. I mean, my mom does a lot of surgeries where reconstruction is needed, and it's just there is no real step-by-step -step on how to do it. Is that the part you're not convinced about? Yeah, I don't know if this little tip's going to survive, but I think it'll go to about here for sure. You get in there, and you figure out, well, how much can I take away, and then well, what can I do to kind of fix it? That looks good. Yeah, it's starting to come around, right? You have to be careful, like, what structures are. Yeah, I mean. Try not to damage that puncta. I think I'll work my way up there. A puncta is the drain hole that you have in the corner of your eye for your tears. So just like people have this little drain hole, reindeer do too. And it actually leads into the nostril and drains the tears. Where is your tear duct? Blocked. Yeah, it's. I think it's involved in the tear. And it's already scared over. Yeah. Ouch. Earlier today, we put fluorescein stain in the eye. And I'm not seeing the stain coming out of her nostril like it should that tear duct is likely affected. If her tear duct's clogged, she'll just have chronic drainage coming down her eye, which will discolor and cause irritation on her skin. But if we can save her eyelid, that is a huge win. And a little bit of drainage is not that bad of a downside. That's something for you guys to keep an eye on if yeah. you do see. Keep uh, an eye on it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. They're amazing healers, so. OK, that's done. Let's give her the reversals. 
One, two, three. Where are we taking her? Right in the grassy spot. Hey, sweet girl. So we're finishing up with this baby reindeer. Oh, shoot. Where'd that guy come from? He's back. Oh. No, but there's a cow. And suddenly we see this poor cow getting chased by a bull. No. I don't think we can leave him. Just let her turn around. <gasps> oh, she's out. She's out. Did she jump? She's out. She jumped the fence. OK, Eric, just uh... yeah, get first. <laughs> oh, goodness. This is so bad. Gosh dang it. Do you want us to go run? Yeah, we should go help herd. Oh, OK. Make sure that, watch that bull. The bull wants out. He's trying to get out, too. The bulls in rut really want to keep their cows in a group. And this cow had taken off on her own, and he wanted to get her back with the group. And then she jumped over the fence. Now she's in a point of the property that is not fenced in, that she could get loose. She could be on the road. She could get hurt. And we need to get her contained as fast as possible. I can open up a fence panel. Can you get it open? There you go. Good job, Eric. I don't know if it's going to be big enough. She's got to see it. You just got to let her get it, find it. She's running around over there. I don't know what she's doing. Oh, she's stuck in the fence. Oops, she's out. She's gotten so worked up and stressed. You know, in their flight and in their panic, they will run straight into a fence, even if they seem to know the fence is there. So this is really dangerous for her. We don't want her to get tangled up in the fencing or caught or a laceration. Sierra, why don't you grab the BAM and a three mil syringe and have it in your pocket just in case she gets stuck in the fence? Oh. Uh, my mom's sending Sierra back to get some sedation, oh. but it's total chaos right now. No one really knows what they're supposed to be doing. Sierra, what's going on? I can't one second. Okay. I don't Just know do what's going on. It is windy, so no one can hear each other. What? Bam! And syringe! And we're all trying to communicate back and forth. Eric, did you walk in, Mom? Can you guys hear me or what? The BAM is in the black tote. I know of it. I mean, it's tough when we're spread out here. We don't have four-wheelers. We don't have radios. It just suddenly happened, and we just have to react. Spread out a little. Uh, she's caught in some fence. Oof, that's what I'm talking about. Bring the BAM. Got the, bring Run. the BAM and syringe. Come on, grab a three mil. Right now, keep running. This is horrible. If they get their antlers caught and their body is still going, she could easily break her neck. Bring it. Woo, oh. heads up. All Woo. right. Lauren, do you want me to try and get her through? Oh, there she there we go. It. What just happened? <laughs> so before any of us manages to get to her with the sedation, she managed to hop the fence back with the herd. Whoa. <laughs> that was exciting. Good luck herding them up. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, now they're all worked up. So now you can see our problem. Yeah. That there is a lot of drama with the bulls in rut, and that, yes. that was really scary for a second. She could have really got hurt. Right. So the emergency kind of worked itself out, but now we need to address the root of why she escaped in the first place. Yeah, this is just a mess. So this um, pen where the shelter is, mm -hmm. and in the corner there is where they started. That's where they have been this whole breeding season. Uh -huh. And then just like yesterday morning, they broke their gate open mm -hmm. and got out. And so now they're in the next pasture over, which is really big. And I'm sure they're enjoying it, but the fence is not secure. <laughs> OK, yeah. <laughs> like you saw how short it is where right. they're able to jump it. Yeah. And so now we're just trying to get them back to this more tall, secure fence where they mm -hmm. started. We want everyone to be contained where there's no predators, where the fence is eight feet tall so they can't hop it. Can, can we help with this? Should we try this now? That would okay. be great. Let's do it. The girls and I are going to help Lauren try to move the whole herd back into the pen if the bull will let us. We might go get some other vehicles, or we can get plywood shields. <laughs> I'm going to just hide behind you. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good luck with that. Yeah, I don't usually show up as a veterinarian to provide herding services, but in this case, it's definitely a form of preventative medicine. The sooner we get the herd contained in their enclosure, the less likely that anyone's going to need vet care. My mom and Eric just went off on the four-wheeler, and they're going to try and do things the nice way first. They have a bucket of green. Come on, everybody. They just follow the green in, and that's best case scenario. Come on. I don't think it's working. What do you think? I don't think it's working. Come on. OK, next plan. Plan B is to gently push them in with these boards. Yeah, just toss that over. So we're going to try and make a wall behind them and push them with the plywood and Michelle on the four-wheeler, and we'll just see okay. how that goes. All right, go for it. 
Make sure you get behind plywood. Yeah, I'm worried about Sierra Maya being in this situation. I mean, the board's kind of an illusion of don't come this way because there's something big and dark and you're just going to want to avoid it. OK, wall time. But the bull can suddenly be like, what are you doing? You're threatening my herd. And just run and pick out any individual and go after them. Maya, you better have your board. Casey gets a wild hair. Sierra, wall. We're all kind of just like shuffling back and forth, trying to be human wall. And like, that's not exactly what I signed up for today. Mm, I don't know about that. Sierra, are you ready? No, actually. Here they come. What? Come on, guys. No. Oh, gosh. Ah! <laughs> OK. Oh, my god. Oh, I feel like my heart's going a little bit after that. Mom, I think we need way more people down at this end than that end. Hey, Mom. Oh, she can't even hear me. Oh, come on, you guys. Yeah, watch the bull, Michelle. There's the big bull right there. He's getting really angry because there's a lot going on. He's trying to climb the fence. Oh, jeez. These bulls can be so nice out of rut. And then as soon as rut begins, it's like almost like becoming a werewolf. Their neck swells, they hang their head low, they give you a side eye. You just, you cannot trust them. They completely change 100% to the most dangerous animal on the farm. Michelle's going to kind of shoo the two bulls away from the gate for you. Oh, that would be very helpful. Thank you. Yeah, we're trying to shoo these guys away from the fence so he can open this gate. We want the cows through the gate, and we need to stop the bull from stopping them. Go on. Hey, dummy, go. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, he's not afraid of us. I mean, normally, it's very simple to do this. No, 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 no. When you're not in the rut season, go. But right now, ha, that bull is going to just run through everybody. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. If the bull runs at us, everybody's just going to back up, right? We can all agree on that. Dr. Oak was getting really close to that bull, and I am getting really nervous. Nope. Keep going. He is not intimidated at all. He's squaring up at her, and that's not a safe place to be. They're so fast. It's just hard to know what they're going to do. Get! Ooh. Okay. <laughs> Move. Look at him. Oh, my gosh. That four-wheeler is not going to stop this bolt. I need to get out of here. This guy's trying no. to kill me. Mom! Mom! Back up. Oh, jeez. Hang on. Mom! Stop! Seriously! I started out in the four-wheeler feeling pretty confident that it would contain these guys. Ooh. Why you do that? Now, I'm not so sure. Oh, shoot. We got to get this bull to let us get the cows in, because he'll kind of look at us as a threat, like we're taking his girls. They'll come at you and, like, actually try and get you. He doesn't care. He is not thinking with his head. I don't think he's coming at us. I think he just wants to get to the gate. And he's like, I don't care if you're in the way. I was trying to shoo the bulls away from this gate so I could get the cows through it. Now, because of all the commotion, the big bull actually seems like he might lead the cows in exactly where we want them to go. You should open the gate now. OK, they want to go, so I think we should get out of their way. The reindeer want to go there right now. Now we can just move them all as a group and try and get them back. Should I go push them again? Yeah. OK. OK, here they come. Oh. Oh. That works. <laughs> Aaron, That'll work. Go shut the gate. That works. Go yeah. shut the gate. That's good. Woo! <laughs> Woo! <sighs> good job. You're like a master reindeer handler. <laughs> yes. I'm definitely not much of a herder. I'm super impressed. I feel like you did better than I would have done. <laughs> Thumbs up. It's not the pen we were ultimately hoping they would end up in, but it is a much more secure pen. It's got an eight-foot fence they can't jump. I'll take it as a win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No predators can hurt them in here. So I feel like they're safe here. I agree. I can sleep a lot better tonight than I did last night. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm really impressed you even got them this far, because we didn't. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> Good, OK. It's been a crazy day of dealing with reindeer and rut. Let's rip. It was a little scary, but also kind of fun. It definitely helped prevent any injuries and a lot more mayhem. Mission accomplished. Later, dudes. What a day.
I'm lined up for the coffee trough. I'm going to have a heart attack if I have any more coffee. Chai tea bag in a skim milk steamer with a shot of low sugar vanilla. I'm officially a diva. We're back at the clinic in hands, and it's shaping up to be a long day. So next is this, let's do this dog. Yep. This is Pearl. She's a Carilion Bear dog with about 10% Labrador. Uh, we've got a speed track in the house where she runs circles really fast. <laughs> All I have to do is say, gimme, and she runs in circles and doesn't stop. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? She slipped out? If she gets loose, never going to catch her. Yeah, Gary has warned us that Pearl is a bit of a slippery dog. She's an escape artist. It's OK, baby. It's OK. She is like a slippery little salamander. Oh, watch. Come on. I'm 75 years old. I can't go running after her. She is heading out of town right now. Pearl! Pearl! Now I'm running down so I can block Pearl from running towards the road because I don't want a bigger emergency to happen. <laughs> you got her? Yeah. <sighs> and sure enough, we finally get a leash on her. I know, baby. <sighs> and this time, we are not letting her go. Put her in prison. Yeah, we're taking her right inside. Oh, oh, oh. No, no, no. There's a lot of um, animals that catch on right before they come in, and they're like, oh, no. And then they turn around and they bolt. <laughs> go right in. Open the door. OK. So Pearl is definitely not the first, and she probably won't be the last. Let's go. Yay! OK, well, there's my cardio for the day. You can't get out of this. I mean, Pearl's very pretty, but um, she looks like there's a sock full of rocks sitting on the side of her face. Ew, what is that? When they first noticed it, it was about like this big, and it has exploded since then. Whenever she shakes her head, it is hitting her in the eye. That must hurt. Can you imagine if something was hanging off your face like that? And you didn't have hands. <laughs> I'm so surprised she wouldn't have just chewed on it. You're so jazzed up. I think it's going to take a minute for this sedation to hit you. Let's have a look at her. Hey, missus. Whoa. That is quite the scrotum hanging off your chin, lovey. What happened to you? Goodness. You're like a Scrotish Highland Cross or something. As soon as Pearl gets face to face with my mom, the jokes start just firing off, oh. and they aren't that appropriate. <laughs> she needs like a jock to hold it under her chin tighter. <laughs> Most of the time, they're embarrassing, and I just want her to stop, but sometimes they're a little bit funny. <laughs> Lynn, you got a scrotum on your face. That's embarrassing. Let's get that off there. This mask is um, really weird looking. It's It's got to go. And fortunately, it's hanging on a stalk. It's what's called pedunculated, when a, a mask kind of hangs on a long stalk. I love that word. Pedunculated. Oh, this is so much harder than I thought it was. Yeah, it's firm. That should actually be really straightforward to remove. It's not as simple as just like cutting it off, but it's pretty darn close. There's going to be a monster vessel, I guarantee it, being something like that. It's basically, you know, opening up the tissues, tying off any bleeders, removing it, and then just closing up the skin sutures. I'll basically treat it like a neuter. <laughs> There'll be no more of that. What do they call those things that when guys have that? A goatee. <laughs> this is a scrotee. <laughs> <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> kill myself. Yeah. OK, it looks like we're almost ready. Can I get a um, just a sterile needle? Before I get started, I'm going to do a quick check to see if it's a mast cell tumor, just because it, it has such an unusual appearance and feel to it, and it grew so quickly. It likely is something cancerous. It's got a real hard kind of center to it. It's really irregular and bumpy inside. I'm going to do like two or three pokes and then put it onto the slide. There's a hard part right here. Ooh. That. So I'm just basically doing a couple of like core biopsies of it. Mast cell tumors require very wide margins, so it's worth having a peek first so I know how extensive do I need to go in terms of how wide of the skin I need to remove. OK, so let's see what we got here. Mast cell tumors are locally invasive, and they will metastasize eventually. It's kind of blurry. Let me get under oil. They're nasty tumors. So I hope I have some good news. Ooh, yeah, that's better. OK, fingers crossed. I have Pearl slides focused in. This will be the moment of truth. So I definitely see some odd 
big round cells. They're not being specialized cells like a hair cell or a bone cell. The cells themselves do look like cancerous cells. They're not normal, they're not um, differentiated. So it does look like some type of tumor. But the good news is that I do not see mast cells. Mast cells are really distinct. They have like dots all over it and stuff. And so not seeing any mast cells, I know I can basically just kind of take it to the stock and remove it. Well, okay then. We'll get started. So I'll just make my initial cut. Okay, where's that big ass vessel? So I'm just using electric pottery to zap a lot of these little oozing vessels. Why are you bleeding through where I zapped you? But there's a couple really large ones that I actually need to tie off with suture. Look at that sucker. This tumor has some nice big vessels to it because it's growing fast. As these cells grow out of control with the tumor, they also stimulate the blood vessels to, to branch in there and help feed these cells. Ooh, that's a pumping. Unfortunately, you can get a pedunculated mass that has vessels kind of going down the channel. Good, now I can tie that off. And actually feeding this thing that's just kind of growing and getting bigger in this sack. Okay, we're about to free the scrot right here. There it is. It is such a ball. I'm just keeping you all on your toes. <laughs> just kind of cutting the tension with some, some scrot jokes. We're having a ball here. It's like a hacky sack. Yeah, it, it is literally a hacky sack. That's such a good one. I keep my jokes PG, but my mom likes to <laughs> say exactly what everyone's thinking. <laughs> Ectopic gonad. <laughs> that was a lot. Okay, so you can see I've removed the tumor, and now the next step is just to close this up. This is kind of an awkward spot to be working right next to her mouth. Mm -hmm. It can be tough when you have a big round circle. Really, I just want it to line up nicely, but it's tricky to make a circle turn into a nice smooth line. But with all the tissue that's moving around, I'm able to undermine a bit, close that circle in the middle first, and then I have two smaller ones to close. Looking pretty darn good. And it actually ends up being a nice straight line and closing pretty nice. It'll heal better if it's kind of lined up without a bunch of extra tissue hanging here and there. That's it. So have a look. What do you think? Not bad, right? She'll be like the Joker. Oh, yeah. I don't want to make her like the Joker. Although it is cute when dogs smile. I love that. So you can see that her lips are still intact. It's a little pursed right now, but all this tissue is back to normal. I mean, she had this huge thing hanging here, so it's gone. That looks like an avocado sitting there, doesn't it? So there's a lot of choices of, of what this could actually be. Sarcoma, fibroma, a fibrosarcoma. Is it one that's likely to metastasize or spread around the body? So I'm gonna take a couple of samples that look sort of representative. Then the best way to tell what type of tumor it is is getting it sectioned by a pathologist. And then when it gets to the lab, they'll cut into really thin slices like prosciutto and put it on a slide and then look at the individual cells and see if they're cancerous or not. We will know what type of tumor this is eventually. Okay, away it goes. Is he good? Pearl's procedure went great. Oh, her tail's wagging. Are you waking up? Well, good morning. Oh, my goodness. Does that feel a little better? How Pearl is waking up right now just goes to show the difference of how animals come out of anesthesia. Your tail's still going. I'm happy to be waking up with everybody. It's wild. Like, we'll have some animals jump out, terrified, growling, and then we have Pearl. This might be the happiest sound I've ever heard. So good. This is not how I wake up in the morning. This is how I wake up. Maybe not my tongue hanging out, but I definitely wake up happy. Pearl looks really nice. I think that's going to heal up very quickly. And I can't wait to see what type of tumor it is, actually, from the pathologist. We'll see what the big guns call it. Happy for another day. Okay. Kitty time. Hi. Hi. Who's this? This is Tesla. Hi, Tesla. <laughs> Tesla is eight years old. He is my roommate and <laughs> my cat son. <gasps> you are so handsome. Thank you. He loves to eat. He loves to sleep and um, cuddle. He's very cuddly. And he's a little bit on the bigger side, hey? Yeah. A little so chunky. Mm -hmm. He was with another family for nine months, and they just let him eat everything. And so he got very large. Hard to take care of himself, but. Yeah. Oh, I can see those mats. So 
He's in for mat removal? Yeah. OK. Tesla's condition is definitely going downhill with this weight. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is. You're stronger than me. It's heavy. <laughs> OK. This is the heaviest crate I've ever felt with it, just one cat inside. Oh, big boy. I'm like in shock, and I'm really eager to get him on the scale and see just how big he is. OK, I'm weighing the cat. Oh. Oh, my goodness. He we oh. oh my god that's not real oh holy 25.8 pounds oh he's purring oh you're a whole lot of kitty love he literally looks like a schnauzer yeah, yeah he looks like a... why did they shave him like that he won't let them do the bottom because it's so uncomfortable and everything oh. that's why he's here poor guy it's sort of a vicious cycle. I mean, he can't groom himself. He gets mats. The mats are uncomfortable. He doesn't want to move around because of that. So every day, there's more and more Tesla. And <laughs> he is a really big boy. Oh, sir. So you can see a whole bunch of yucky mats on his belly. I know. And they're all nasty and stinky. And they, he doesn't let anyone shave them off. So when you have that mat all stuck together, it's basically holding a bunch of bacteria. It often holds yeast and things up against the skin, and then you start to get infections. Oh my gosh, and I really hope there's not any open. Yeah, there probably will be. On the butt. So we're gonna sedate him so we can do a shave and also deal with the mass on his chin. Tesla has a growth on his lip. It's been there for a couple months. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. We'll get two birds with one stone here. Oh, so let's see if I can get this into muscle it's enough. Like, fat. I can't even scrub him. <laughs> The mass is certainly important. We need to remove it because it's getting so big. But the mats are equally important. I mean, they're very uncomfortable, and they're going to lead to serious skin infections if we don't get them out of there. How about while I work on this chin mass, you guys can start to gently get those mats away, OK? I want to do the mats. I want to do the mats. OK, we'll both do the mats. Sierra, you can help me with the chin mask. Oh, OK. <laughs> it's a fight over who gets to do the mats because they're really satisfying. You know, it's like when you get that out of the way, it's like, Oh, they look and feel so much better. Is this the lidocaine for him? Wow. Yeah. OK. All right, here we go. Look at that sucker. We need to put on gloves, hey? Yeah. Most likely, I'm going to finish dealing with this chin mass way before they finish with the mats. The mats are insane. You know, removing a chin mass is pretty straightforward. I just need to get underneath it, close it up. It's fairly discreet. It's a bloody son of a gun. But for the mats, I mean, there's a lot to that. They need to, you know, very carefully take those mats off. I'm pulling pretty tight, so. You don't want to be too quick about it, because it's very easy to cut them when you're getting so close to the skin. Is that like your wiener? Like, what is it? I can't Yeah, he see. has a wiener. He's a boy. Well, you got to be careful. So stinky. Yeah. You would just start smelling it somewhere. Tessa's mats smell horrible. They are caked full of feces and urine. Set up a video. Everything you can think of has just been trapped in these mats and pressed up against his skin. Look. Whoa. This is a mat that was on one of his little butt cheeks going under his leg. Ooh. Cat urine up against skin is going to cause sores. Like, it will really give you, like, almost a chemical burn. I am shocked at the state of his skin that it is not open wounds. You guys didn't see any, like, open lesions. Look at that butt crack. Oh. Look at that little butt crack. The fattest cat in the world. We're wrapping up with Tessa's mats, and he is big, bald, and beautiful. It's a little bit of a shortcut. <laughs> with his belly. Aw. We can leave a tuft at the end of his tail, though. OK, chin's done. So I removed the mask from the chin. As I was removing it, it kind of fell apart and looked more like a granuloma, which is almost like an inflammatory reaction. Granuloma is not malignant, but it can behave malignant in terms of coming back. So that is something we have to watch. But we really do need to address the elephant in the room. God, that's a lot of cat. It's, it's a big bone cat for sure, Like, but it probably could weigh, you know, maybe 12 pounds. But to be 26 pounds is... Um, morbidly obese, really dangerous for the cat. An obese cat is at huge risk for other issues, arthritis, difficulties with their liver, the kidneys, you know, the heart. And diabetes is very common in overweight cats. Poor oh, lovey. Off all, the dirt. all of these issues will come together and shorten his life, decrease his quality of life. So it's definitely something that we're going to talk about so that he can be healthy and be happy. Oh, my goodness. 
Okay, here he is. Oh, thank you so much. The big boy. Oh, Tesla. I'm so happy to have Tesla back, and I think he's going to be in good spirits and really proud of himself, really handsome. Obviously, he needs to lose weight. I heard you've been trying. It's difficult. Was he having free choice food or something? Well, they hid his food from him, but they he would break into the cupboard where they're oh, hiding his food gosh. and eat until he passed out. And so, <laughs> yeah. Eat until he passed out. Yeah. Sounds like Tesla is a little bit of a hamburglar, kind of like a night agro eater. I think Jessie's going to have her work cut out for her trying to get this cat's weight in half. 50%, you know, has to go, which is a lot. OK. There's diet food for cats or getting a kitten to try to get them to play more. Oh, OK. Yeah, I could see how that would be a healthier lifestyle for him. I mean, if I have to get a small kitten, then that's the price I have to pay. <laughs> Thanks for bringing him in. He's really sweet. I really appreciate it. He's going to no be problem. so happy now. Yeah, I bet he is. <laughs> oh, Tesla. That's a sleepy boy. We're going home. Mini, 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 mini me. I'm getting out to the main road. So today we're headed to Hidden Hills Farm, and everything on this farm is a miniature. I love that. How big? How big are they? Like the cattle are mini herfers, uh, the sheep are mini sheep. Everything is going to be pint bite size. size. <laughs> oh, not bite size. I said pint size. Pint size. Yeah, that's better. That's a better way to say it. Yeah. This is it. Maya, look at the pigs. Oh, oh my god. So cute. That little thing. Hi, Holly. Hello. We love miniatures so much because with a normal size cow, you can have only one cow per acre. And we have only about five acres. And I love your little mini barns, too. Fits the mini animals better. Right. <laughs> with miniatures, you can have three to an acre, and they don't damage the ground the way that the heavier animals do. So I have our ram Winston in here to stay out of the rain for you. He was chased by a dog oh, and got no. his ear as he was running away from them, slipped on the ice and um, injured his back hind leg. Oh, hello, sir. Don't let him out. Good catch, Willow. <laughs> Winston is the only registered baby doll South Down Ram in the state of Alaska. How are you, sir? He's the only guy I've got to breed my flock. We just need to know breeding soundness yeah. right. for his future. I need to know definitively whether or not he'd make it through breeding season. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. it's, we don't get into breeding season and then, he, and then yeah. find out it was He can't manage right. on his two back legs, right? <laughs> I mean, not to be too crass, but he's got to get up and stand on his hind two legs and have a little bit of hip action to get the job done. <laughs> so hopefully his hip will hold him through that. I think okay. it might be dislocated. Oh, OK. If Winston's hind leg is actually dislocated, that's a really serious diagnosis for a breeding ram. That's basically a career ender. Yeah, I do feel a funny little click in his hip. I think the best way, though, is going to be with x-rays. I'll just compare it to this one. Whether or not it's a dislocation or not, I mean, that's that's a huge question. The best way to see a dislocation is with x-rays. Um, I really want a view of him like this. OK. <laughs> But there could be a whole host of other issues at the source of his lameness. He could have a chip fracture. He could have a foreign body. Maybe he got a stick poke when he fell. Nope. There you go. So I'm really hoping the x-rays are going to help me rule out dislocation and go from there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. We're going to scooch him this way. OK. Try and sit him down and sit back. Sit him back. Oh, uh, I think it's going to be a little bit of a wrestling match. Thankfully, he probably only weighs about 100 pounds. Yeah, you don't like this. <laughs> yeah, we know. But he's strong enough to cause some problems. There you go. A little bit more up. Let me film this way. OK, 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 OK. He certainly could hurt us or kick and roll around, and I don't want him to hurt himself. OK, that's good. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, buddy, we had you in a good spot. Oh, 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 oh. Hold on, sir. Hold on, sir. Oh, sir, watch him. Get check. Oh. You watch your face, smile. This can break your job. Winston's definitely giving us a run for our money. He's a lot stronger than he looks, and he he packs a punch. No, sir. No, sir. Please hold still. I'm kind of dodging all these shots that he's taking at me while trying to support his legs and not pull too hard on them since they're already sore. No, no, no. Don't want him to hurt his head. I know, but you've got to restrain him or else he'll keep kicking. Winston, Winston, you're tipped. You're supposed to not move. 
Usually, when you tip sheep back, they tend to kind of give up, and that's how you can shear them. Oh, my god. <laughs> but he's uncomfortable. That hip is sore, and he's going to fight us a little bit. <laughs> no, no, no. It's heaven a fit. So I'm hoping we can do this really quickly. Higher, Sierra, you go to the higher. Get him in a good position, not try to manipulate him too much on his sore leg, and see if we can get some good pictures of his bones. OK, there we go. Go. Maybe that's a good angle. Yeah, it's out. His leg's dislocated. Oh. Poor love. Oh. OK, Sarah. Easy, easy. Easy, easy. Oh, my love. You're poor. I'm so thing. sorry. So as I'm looking at the x-ray, I see right hip looks good. You can see the femoral head, which is kind of the round part on the femur, is stuck right in the acetabulum, which is the part of the pelvis where you have that hip joint. And then the left side, I can see that that femur is nowhere near the socket where it should be. There's the receiving end of the pelvis. Right. So that circle's up in there, and this one is not. So okay. a very clear dislocation. I can see a lot of fibrous tissue around it, so probably he's gotten like a little bit of a false capsule that's that's slowly healed over it. It's really tough to even get the femur back into the joint at this point. Within the first four or five days, you can manipulate it in sometimes, but it's been a couple months. You know, it's not fixable at this point. OK. Oh, poor Winston. The best treatment for this actually is just anti-inflammatories to keep him comfortable and to keep him going, at least through this breeding season. <laughs> I know, but that's going to help you feel so much better, sir. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he's able to breed for this yeah. fall. He's done pretty well. But long term, he'd long be better term, off. Long term, I think, he, I, yeah, I think, you know, one season, you'll be lucky to get out of him. Farm animals need four legs to get around. Unfortunately, before winter comes, we'll probably have to euthanize him so he's not trying to walk on three legs on ice. That's well, that's misery. unfortunate, but I'm glad that we know for certain before yeah. trying to make that decision. Absolutely. This is a very painful condition, and he will not be able to recover from this. Unfortunately, the kindest thing to do right now is to not let Winston suffer. Look at your sweet face. It's really hard to let them go. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's weird sometimes how an animal's fate seems to just like depend on what I'm going to see on my computer screen or what results I'm going to get. You take the x-rays, and then boom, there it is in your face, you know, like not what you wanted to see. OK. Well, thank you. You are welcome. Sorry about that. That's just how it is. You need that information, good or bad, so that you can do the best for the animal. We'll pack up our stuff and get. Hello. Hi, Dr. Oakley. Hi, Gary. How's Pearl healing up? Everything's fine. Pearl looks good, feels good, as you can tell. Yeah, she looks like she looks great. So I just heard from Gary and Kalia, and they let me know that Pearl is doing perfect. There's no swelling, there's no crusting, no drainage. You can't even see where the stitches are. Everyone's happier, especially Pearl. And I had the results from that big thing hanging off her face. It's really irregular and bumpy inside. It's called a trichoblastoma, which is a hair follicle tumor. Fortunately, it's totally benign. All we do is surgery, and she's going to be just fine now. Yay! Yeah, I'm so glad. OK, thanks. We'll be in contact. Awesome. I'm so grateful that this time the news is good. And things have calmed down at the reindeer farm. The bulls have settled, and life is back to normal there. I really appreciate all this good news. It's like hitting a big reset button. You got to have hope that you're going to get through the bad and circle back and get that good again. Mm -hmm.